Well, 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 welcome back to Crown's Crypto Cave. We show a very happy, very special new week as it is an incredibly special week as we finally have something new going on. So of course, as always, want to be wishing you the best of the best, the happiest of the happiest, just wishing you well. And let's get into the live scene, wasting no more time over here because there's no more time to waste when Bitcoin's done its one move for the past week. So of course, this uh, the range that we've been looking at for the past week was 37.50, this yellow 21 exponential moving average right here, which is actually currently coming in around uh, 37.56 uh, and a half. And uh, the 39.50 range to the up upside. Now it is looking like Bitcoin is going to likely close below this 3750 range by end of day as the lower time frames have already confirmed below the 3750 um, support that we've been looking at on the four hour right here. Actually also marked by the 200 exponential moving average right here. So if we were able to, to both open and close this next one below it, that's going to likely lead on to the continuation that I'd like to see in order to get down to the 3650-ish uh, side of the range. But overall, you know, NASDAQ exponential moving average crosses right over here and getting divergence would be between the yellow 21 and the green 55 as we do see this range likely resolved. Now, of course, we could look at this as a, some, do you want to call it a sending triangle? Do you want to call it a symmetric triangle? I don't care what you call it, consolidation of some sorts, which actually has been confirmed to the downside. We already hit the measure move off that and actually taken it out by a little bit more. So overall, do we have something new forming? Do we have something new going on? Well, looking at the Medium time frame also is we do have our four hour Stokes headed down uh, with plenty of room to go down, actually snaking around the neutral zone yesterday before having some more continuations. I believe that all of the medium to high time frames are now down as well. This is your eight hour fresh cross down as of uh, yesterday. 10 hour is fresh cross down as of yesterday, rejection of the bullish control zone. 12 hour is losing momentum, but actually still up. Uh, daily is still down, giving us a little bit of a snake yesterday, but that's okay. Uh, two day just got a new tick as well and coming down. And of course, the big news with this or perhaps, I mean, not necessarily the big news with this, but uh, but basically what we've been looking at for the past, well, what is it, I don't know, a week or two now, um, is basically this. I mean, the daily stokes, each and every time that we've gone into this range above the 80 marker for the past year, it has called major tops, going all the way back to quite literally just one year ago during February top at 12,000 right here. This was your May top at 10,000 right here. Here was your aug early August top at 8,400 right here. Here was your early September top at 7,400 right here all these tops before initiating the move down to the low side of the range at 6,000 at the time. Um, and more recently, we have gone into this range once again. So while Bitcoin was getting everyone very bullish uh, last week, it was revealed that this is likely just a trap. And overall, this is the beauty of looking at the higher timeframes and understanding that the price structure is still that of, of a very corrective nature. Looking at the volume signature to confirm that definitely does help as well. As you can see, a very nice orderly drop of volume going from left to right over here perhaps better seen on an exchange like uh, like Bitstamp. But, you know, again, yeah, I, I think that this is very clear right now with a little bit of an over of a throw over right here before getting worked back down to the low side of the range. Overall, when I do look at something like this, I want to keep a, keep a few things in mind, and that actually is this three to uh, this three to double time frame right here, which which is starting to turn around more and more. I did not catch that the fifty has come below the three seven seven. That actually <laughs> that actually did happen uh, a few weeks ago, but fair enough. Anyways. Um, so again, looking at things like these, yes, the overall trend is down. It does look to me like we do want to see some more continuations. I do have positions based off this right now. Um, I dig it into the second half of my long-term position. If you guys remember, I had uh, about double the size on my March futures short from 6,300. I took off half of that when Bitcoin rallied above, I think, 30 for 50 or 3500 um like three three four weeks ago whenever that was uh and then i was looking to add on and get on the second port part back of that but on the june so that i could actually you know uh, carry this for a little bit of time and i finally got that i entered in at 37.30 uh, which they're currently trading for about mm, 50 bucks under as those have a severe discount right now so overall that's kind of you know i was uh, i was very happy to get that in i got that in as soon as um as soon as as we broke this area and it looked like we were, you know, lo looking like we were going to actually finally, finally uh, uh, break this 3750 ish area. Jesus Christ, man, having very difficulties with <laughs> getting my words out today, unfortunately. Anyways, um, you know, uh, you know, all lower time frames, all higher time frames are bearish. The question is now is where do we have the bounces as looking at whoops, going back on over here to our to our bit Mexican charts, we do see the next support is coming in around 3650, uh, which is actually where Bitcoin did buy. Uh, bounce off of what was it about about a week and a half ago on the uh, 27th of February right here. But again, that's also going to be a four hour, four hour 200 simple moon average, which Bitcoin has not broken to the downside 
uh, or has, or yeah, it's not broken to the downside in about a month now. Yeah, about a month. The last time was uh, February 8th. So again, you know, looking at something like this, it is going to be very telling how we react if, if and when we do get down to the 36.50 market. Now, obviously, my opinion is this, is that as long as we are below the daily 21 exponential, I am bearish and I am looking for a move to basically the low side of the range overall. Now, that's an opinion, of course, when it comes to technical analysis, as we just saw, 36.50 and obvious support. Then below there, we're going to actually have a low 3,500, which is going to be the 618. And well, that at that point in time, I mean, at this current price trajectory, we would be essentially fulfilling another retest of this rising trend line that's been governing the uh, the lows since we put them in um, in the middle of December. So, you know, it's 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 one of those things where if you do get down to the six one eight, that kind of is the bottom of the range as far as I'm concerned. So. Looking at that, uh, I don't want to get too damn bearish. Just like when Bitcoin was at the above the 6,000 level over here, each and every time that Bitcoin came down to the 6,000 level after you know after one of these major dumps, everyone got super bearish. But that was actually the buying time before another you know failed rally attempt, which is basically what we've been seeing off this area right over here. You know, you have this very uh, the, the the first the first rally was okay, but still not too, not not like momentum shifting. Uh, second rally not so good. Uh, third rally. Um, um, okay as well. But again, you know, people just getting very bearish down around this area, down around this area, when really the times to be bearish were, you know, right as soon as we confirmed this as a lower high, as soon as we confirmed this as a lower high, and as, we, as soon as we confirmed this as a lower high, just like all these areas right over here. So these sorts of things need to be taken to, into context of the greater picture at hand. And with that said, if Bitcoin did come down to this area, I would be looking to be a buyer on first pass if we do break this area, which is also going to likely coincide around the 200 symbol on the weekly. Uh, let's just go over and confirm that really quick right now as we did get a new tick on the weekly. Uh, it's going to be coming in right around, uh, yeah, 3,400. It looks like a little under, a few ticks under 3,400, but close enough is close enough. Um, then, you know, as long as that area is holding, I don't want to be directional short looking for a big play into the mid to low 2000s if that's going to happen. As long as Bitcoin's above the 200 simple, I, I don't want to be positioned like that to be very, 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 very frank. However, in the lower time frames, to be to, to kind of confuse this a little bit more, I will be bearish as long as we're below the daily 21 exponential. And especially if today's daily closes below it, then I would be looking to probably add onto my short on any retest around that 3750-ish range, give or take a few bucks. Doesn't matter what it is, but that is assuming that we close today's daily below it. If we close, to, to, to just summarize it in one more way, if we close today's daily below the 21 exponential, below 3750, I will sh I will add onto a short anywhere around that 3750 mark if we come back and retest it. So again, um, this is not financial advice, but I'm not a financial advisor, blah, 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 blah. Just sharing exactly what I do in these, in these exact sort of same situations. I don't really see any rush again into a position right now as uh, we are going to be brushing up against a lot of supports down here. But as far as the daily looks like, it does look like continuation. It does look like we have a nice little patch of redistribution right here. Typically speaking, after a big uh, move like this in an overall down market, which this was a bearish engulfing dildo, to be quite clear, um, when you have a period of indecision, of sideways indecision, it's likely going to resolve in the over, in, in the side of the overall trend. So the fact that this one's coming down does also, again, still add um, add validity to the fact that we are, well, very much in the heavy grips of a, of, of a bearish territory, of a bearish market. Again, if you want the full explanation of why I believe Bitcoin is still bearish, uh, check out the video I uploaded yesterday in the long-term analysis playlist. It'll go through a much more detailed scenario than I can ever go through on a video like this because quite literally over an hour long on just that fact. Uh, but I can quickly gloss over the, you know, the the five or six or seven things that I look for for a major market cycle low, which I just don't see on uh, present on Bitcoin right now. First and foremost is the volume on the low, not not synonymous, not consistent with the way that uh, with Bitcoin plays out volumes on the low. The return to the low also very, 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 very uncharacteristic. The reaction off the low, the percentage, um, the percentage, uh, or sorry, the time spent at the low also not consistent with the way that Bitcoin plays its lows. The MBT signal also not signally low. The high vol the historic volatility bank also not signally low. Both those things have been perfect in Bitcoin's past, by the way. Um, the Bitcoin valuations chart actually as well, not signally low, which I completely forgot to talk about yesterday. But this is another kind of fundamental type indicator, which 
has called the bottoms pretty damn well in the past when all of these uh, uh, moving at, or not moving averages, but when all of these, um, do you want to just call them lines? Basically, we have a, a, a plethora of different um, fundamental markers, market cap, realized cap, MBT cap, MBT ratio, a delta cap, average cap, top cap, inflow cap, fees cap, all these sorts of things. They have been shown in the past that when these fundamental indicators can coincide with each other, when they converge in each other, that is where major lows are being put in. And as you can see right now, if we zoom in and we, oh, you bastard, <laughs> don't do this right now. Oh, you bastard, somewhere right over here. If we go into the more, okay, this is just going to be annoying. Apologies about that, guys. Oh, there we go. As you can see right here, they're actually diverging away from each other. So that's not good. Um, it's definitely not what you want to see uh, on a potential low. You want to see them all coming in together, which they tried here, but uh, bounced off each other on that first double top at uh, 4,200. So again, the overall picture at, uh, as, as it is has not changed in the overall in the last over a year. Trend's been down. Trend is your friend, uh, as the saying goes. So again, looking at something like this, it is very visually apparent that uh, we're likely to see some more continuations off that. Of course, if Bitcoin does close today's daily above the 21 exponential, this could, you know, this could very well uh, switch around. But I think that's less likely right now, as we just set in, I believe, all the way up to an eight-hour dildo, all the way below the 3750 marker. Yep, that is confirmed below here. And I would like, I, I would certainly be learning tor leaning towards continuation rather than uh, being bought back up. Of course, we've all seen crazier things in that. Uh, volume on the dump, pretty lackluster to begin with. But um, hey, you know, as long as we're below there, pressure is on as far as I'm concerned. So that would be the one big caveat of today is that uh, if Bitcoin does close back above 3750, then this goes out the window and we go back to the range essentially. But to me, this looks like we're being resolved right now. And if we could just get some more continuation below uh, 3680, 3690, whatever it is, uh, the current low of the day, then that's probably going to be good enough for me, uh, at the very least, to, uh, to towards a move towards uh, 3650. But overall, remember, the mark doesn't play itself out in just one day. It plays itself out in, I mean, really should be viewed in, in week, weekly in increments, not fucking even like hour, <laughs> daily or hourly, uh, God forbid. Um, but anyways, uh, you know, we've been, we've been speaking about this for quite some time, so just kind of like add up the case on what's like on you know what I believe is most likely to happen basically going back on over here to the daily we do see the yellow 21 and the green 55 uh, across the upside we do see the yellow basically a lower period get to the high of the uh, of, of the um, of the higher period and overall typically that's actually a very good signal when you're in an upwards market but for the past year whenever we've actually gotten this cross it has signaled kind of the end of the rally and as soon as they cross back down to the downside it's very bad and let's actually go back in time to the last time that we even had this cross the upside which was over here in september of last year quite literally just uh the last ditch effort of this bull trap to 7400 it crosses for just a second and the next day red dildo party all the way down to the to, to the bottom of the range the time before that was right over here uh, a couple months prior sorry one month prior in early august on this run to 8400 you get the cross, it calls this kind of last ditch attempt. Once we break back down below the 21 exponential, it is straight on to the races to the low side of the range. Then the time before that was right over here where you know you get this cross, you have the last sort of rally attempt, it breaks the 21 exponential key and then down to the bottom side of the range. And then the time before that, well, we actually didn't have a time before that. To, to really get the next kind of uh, piece of the puzzle, we have to go to the four hour, which I think really helps solidify in my mind as when we when we go to the four hour, one of the reasons why a couple of weeks ago in middle of February, right here, I think it was I think it was quite literally two weeks ago um, on Monday. I remember we saw we saw Bitcoin get the golden cross after consulting for about a week and a half in this whole in this like very AIDS tierish price range. That is the green 55 and the purple 200, by the way, which crossed the upside. And we had a nice 17.5% run over the course of a little over seven days before the red dildo party began. Keep in mind, Bitcoin broke the 55 to the downside and was never able to both open and close a four hour dildo above it um, ever since it broke it right here. So let's actually go back in time and again look at the past results of this and look at how it ended in the past as well. 
And for the last year, we had a few golden crosses. We had this one right here. Again, same area as we looked at on the daily stokes, same areas that we just looked at on the daily exponentials. We could also even do it on the two day stokes as well. Um, but you know, another, this one producing about a 9% move from bottom to top over the course of about six days. And once we break back below and confirm below this green 55 exponential movement average, it is just straight on down to the low side of the range, similar to what we saw on the daily 21. Then we have the time before that, which was right over here, this golden cross producing a beautiful move about you know almost 25 uh, percent over the course of uh, a little under two weeks and once we broke back below this green 55 right here it was straight on down to the blows of the range before ever getting back above that green 55 again or so i mean like you do get back above it again but it goes to the lows of the range first is what i'm trying to say the time before that of course right over here of course, right over here. It is right over here. Uh, and producing another, you know, 20% move over the course of a uh, little under or a little over two weeks. And look at this. We snake around the 55 a couple times, but eventually this one was a fake out. And this one right over here, as soon as we broke it, we were never able to both open and close a, a four hour total above that green 55 before going down again to the low side of the range. And the time before that, actually even giving one more example over here is uh, on the run to 12,000, you know, about a 12% about a gain from top to bottom over the course of uh, five days. And again, once we break the 55, it's just straight down to the low side of the range before we regain it, before we're both able to both open and close um, above it. So is that what happens here? I mean, the 55 is all the way at uh, 3,800 now. I'd imagine if that one, if that one is allowed to crawl back down below 3,750, from the higher time frame perspective, that is going to have massive implications with forcing the whole, you know, house of cards, I suppose you could say, to likely <laughs> have that follow through down to the bottom side of the range, which would, you know, again, like I said, it, technically it would be. Whoops, going on over here to our bit Mexican chart. Technically, it would be uh, 3,500, I suppose you could say. But I'd be looking for a test anywhere between 3,500 and the weekly 200 simple, which is about 3,400. So again, as long as 3,400 does break, or sorry, as long as 3,400 does hold, I don't know why I'm having such difficulty with my words today. Maybe I need, maybe I actually do need some coffee. Maybe I am dependent on it. Um, but overall, you know, if if 3,400 does break, I do get extremely bearish, looking for a move into the 2,000s. And again, this is coming with the major assumption, massive assumption being made right here. But assuming that we do break this pink 200 simple moon average, or perhaps even more importantly to say is that if we were to break the 200 simple moon average, this is what I'd be looking for. There we go. That makes a lot more sense. And I'd be looking for a move into this blue box territory right over here, which would be encompassed by the uh, by the area from 2300 to 2600, also the 886 Fibonacci retracement from the ultimate high to the ultimate low of the past market cycle. Well, if we actually look at 2014, 2015, we actually did bottom out at the 886 Fibonacci retracement down around here. Anyways, back onto this area, we do have some nice historical horizontal trend lines coming around this area. We do have the uh, volume profile showing some massive activity being thrown down in this area. By the way, the volume profile also showing that as soon as we lose that 3400 uh, kind of uh, uh, 200 simple right here, there's pretty much nothing doing all the way down to uh, mid 2000s, very similar to what we saw at 6000, all the way to high 3000s right here, you're likely to see some some flushing action if that were to occur if we were to actually break the 200 simple, but that is a key first and foremost part. Um, until that happens, I mean, this is you know, you can always you can always make a uh, you can always you can always make an argument for the other side. But um, yeah, you know, looking at something like this, we also do have the BLX index showing the 377 exponential coming around this range. So that would likely be the next area. Uh, very, 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 very powerful in traditional markets. And of course, the monthly as well, which I am now really heavily starting to consider that the 50 on the monthly is the way to be viewing it, not the 55. We do have these moving averages uh, overhead approaching it very quickly. And to explain why this is important, I have to first relate that the lower time frames of three day is, again, as we discussed before, that of consolidation. This is very correct corrective price structure. This is very, very corrective price action, which as verified by the volume signature does look like just a consolidation to me. And if that is just going to be a consolidation on the three day, which is a little bit easier to see it right there, then I'd go over to the monthly and say, yes, we are being held by the green 50, 50 um, right here. And that is the right way to do it. And as you do see these, a plethora of wicks above it, we've been at, we, we, we were held above it on the first big fat red dildo taking us down in November. But then after that, it's been straight down below with a retest rejection once, twice, and perhaps working on a third time. But as these two moving averages approach each other and taking into this as as consolidation, taking into this with consider of, cons considering it consolidation, 
these two movement averages are going to likely ignite the bot and algo selling and produce some more violence, some more, um, some more intense uh, selling action as overall a lot of the bigger bots, a lot of the bigger algos are going to be running off something like that, you know, looking at these two moving averages to kind of uh, tell them when the greater trend is likely to get even more intense. So if they are going to sell, if they are going to intensify their, their, their selling programs, then uh, this consolidation obviously a lot more likely to break onto the downside. And of course, the next big area that I'd be looking forward to is, you know, around this 2,500 area right here, the cyan moving average. Chiefs even lose my voice as well this morning. Um, but back on to, I need to take a sip of this water, guys. I'm damn thirsty. Oh, so much better. Man, what the fuck? What the fuck was that? Um, anyways, uh, okay, let's go. Let's actually look at the volume profile on the four hour. I'm curious what it's saying. Yeah, we're kind of in no man's land right here as well. You can see a lot of activity being thrown down in the 3550 uh, ish range. So while 3650 is technically a support, I would actually be looking for this to probably come down to 3550 uh, ish area. Um, again, this all comes with the caveat that we stay below 3750. Uh, it does look very likely right now, though. Again, like I said, all the medium to uh, to high time frame stokes are turning down. I believe the two day even had another tick uh, confirmed on this guy last night. Which, by the way, the two day looks like a rejection of the 10 simple and continuation below the uh, the 21 on the two day, which will be infinitely more powerful than the daily that we saw. But of course, this is not end later tonight and it's tomorrow at 7 p.m. Eastern our time is when we get a new tick on this guy. Uh, so if this one does end below uh, 37, uh, 30, then yeah, I'd be looking for this to have, uh, again, it's it's just very, it, I mean, this this one just looks like it wants to come down. Uh, if we look at the two day stokes, you can see that each and every time that we've crossed down for the last year, it's not been good for the bulls. Each and every time that we've crossed down, it, it has been a high of a range, whether it's right here, which was our double top in um, late December, early January of this uh, of this year, whether it's this area right here in September, again, that top at 7,400 before returning to 6,000, whether it's this top right over here at, at, uh, at, at 8,400 before returning to 6,000, or this top right here at 10,000 before returning to 6,000, or this top right here at uh, at 12,000 before returning to 6,000. You know, it's been pretty damn good. So looking at something like this for, for further confirmation, we'll have to wait until tomorrow. But if that were to happen, I would be looking for Bitcoin to have enough juice to probably hit the lows of the range. I mean, yes, like I said, about 35, 50-ish uh, area, but... Uh, there's no reason why I have to stop there. Uh, 3,400 would be kind of like the big, uh, the big one to be aware of. Uh, Two-day RSI is trending now below the exponential. That's not good. I mean, we basically have. Well, no, we don't really have any bearish divergence, do we? Can't really have that with uh, when you're making a higher high. But we do have the jewel also signaling that Bitcoin is kind of getting getting to the shit as well. I mean, each and every time that have that it's reached above this range, above the 80 range, those have been major dumps. Um, now, obviously, we are literally in the middle after hitting that range, so it's a little bit late to be taking signals like this. But just like each and every one of those ticks did basically lead on to a move down to the low side of the range, that's kind of what I'd be looking for here as well. You also do see a rejection on the exponential. Essentially, you even do see, I mean, you basically see a head and shoulders on the uh, on the RSI, which yes, you definitely can see a head and shoulders on the RSI. It's like a line chart. In fact, I'd actually put more weight on those than I would on on spot price action. Uh, as far as those formations go, it's, it's harder to paint them in the RSI than it would be on price action. So again, just more things kind of adding up. Looking at the Bitcoin longs and shorts, we do have a little under 24,000 open longs. But uh, shorts have not really added. They're literally right where we saw them yesterday at about 17 and three quarters um, uh, on Finex. So let's go back on over here and actually look at it on the graphical representation or chartical representation. So longs in real time are actually not not below 24,000. They are above 24,000. They're about 24 and a quarter. And again, that's kind of like the same imbalance that we've seen on all of the major, uh, not on all of the major dumps, but but namely the last dump that we saw from uh, middle of November. They are quite literally right around this range as well. This was your break of 6,000 right here where longs were around 25,000. Right now they're about 24,000. By the same token, 
at that same point in time, shorts were at about twenty thousand. So we had an even we had we had less of less of an imbalance at that level than we do right now, where shorts are under eighteen thousand uh, real time. So putting on my drawing tools here, you can see that each and every time that the shorts, uh, cumulatively speaking, have been got have been have been getting under this uh, into this red box territory, essentially below twenty thousand for the last year. The trend has been major fucking dump from all of the air, all the same areas that we saw before from the Stokes from from the three-day dollar golden or sorry front front from the four-hour dollar golden cross from the daily exponential cross from the from the daily jewel from the we're going to look at the crypto fear and greed index later from the uh what else do we want to say whatever else that we looked at there's a bunch of different ways that you can get it but basically all the same basically all the fucking same um but you know this was this was your twelve thousand double top at Feb in february of last year 2018 this was your top in may at ten thousand last year this was your top at 84 in august last year this was your top at i mean basically six thousand before breaking down to three thousand once again we're in this range so that has been the trend for the past prior year doesn't mean that the trend is going to go on for forever in fact it's probably not going to go on forever but the trend is your friend until the end of the trend so again it's been working for over here and that is good enough for me let's go over to the crypto fear and greed index which we're actually taking out of 36 today we were 44 yesterday but uh the big news is that essentially we were we got all the way up to a 69 about a week ago which is a great number but also the highest that it's been in the past year except for one other point where bitcoin was at twelve thousand. so people were more optimistic last year or sorry last week or what was it we, yeah about a week ago than they were at any other point in time um and bitcoin is essentially in my opinion in a worse posturing than it has been at any one of these other times so again it's just telling us about the underlying market dynamics and telling us about the overall feeling i i believe with regards to retailers as this has just been getting the top so well each and every time that it spikes above a 50 when people get euphoric that is usually topping area. Yes, you do get a little bit more continuations and rallies, but overall the rally is, you know, for the past year has been doomed above that point. Is it always going to be that way? No, it's not. Of course not. But for now, when, when you're in a bearish market, bearish indications work pretty fucking well. When you're in a bullish market, bullish indications work pretty fucking well. We're in a bearish fucking market, though. That's, that's the problem. Um, so, yes, you can actually even see a head and shoulders on the uh, Crypto Fear and Greed Index. Of course, does that mean anything? I don't I don't think that you can actually make formations and something like this, but funny to look at anyways. Um, and, of course, each and every time that, that it spikes up, that calls tops really well in an overall bear market. When it gets very low, it does tell you to be cognizant that a low can be put in, but there's a few times where it's 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 hung around below the 20 marker for, for a month or even a little bit over a month um, right here and also right here in November to December. So just because it gets super low does not mean that uh, does not mean that Bitcoin will stop going lower. It means it's probably going to stop going lower. <laughs> sometime soon <laughs> sometime soon as again i mean a month of price action a lot of damage can be done this was all the way from august to september this was all the way from november to dis you know december i mean that's a lot of damage was done during that time um so again i do want to be uh, very aware of that Okay, what else can we talk about? Do we want to look at the other top shit coins? Uh, what's Mr. Buterol doing at 129? Mr. Buterol has broken. Mr. He he was the one that looked the most bearish of the top three. Uh, again, actually broke the 21 exponential two days ago, which I believe that we caught, retested it yesterday, rejected from it yesterday, and continuations onwards and downwards today. Actually hitting the 0.5 formally. This should you know should should provide some some support on first pass. But uh, eventually, if this does break 127 on Finex, I would be looking for a move to retest the 117 ish area down. here here which would fulfill a retest of this massive trend line going all the way back to may of last year at 820 dollars um and also the 618 fibonacci retracement so again if 127 breaks that's exactly where i'm looking towards uh for the next big uh for, or, for, or for the next potential bounce overall though uh this one looks like it wants to come lower to me daily stokes still coming healthily down two day stokes just crossed down same sort of thing each and every time these guys cross down it's not fucking good three day stokes are losing momentum as well um what is a 12 hour saying uh 12, wow 12 hour stokes just did a fucking hero pattern um 
But uh, but overall, you know, this just looks like it wants to droop its way on downwards. I'd be bearish on this guy as long as as long as we're below 137 and a half. I'd be bearish on him. And we have a clear rejection last night. Uh, this is again, you know, this this has been the canary in the coal mine. Led the mark to the upside, now leading to the downside. Or I guess you could say also Mrs. Litecoin led to the upside as well. But uh, but event driven, right? Remember, this was event driven off the back of Constantinople. <laughs> Constantinople. And, uh, you know, when you get an event, you get event psychology, you get events, you know, you get event results with that. So typically, typically speaking, when you have an event, you basically have the big market movers, people with deep pockets buying up a lot of the underlying leading up into the event because they know that retailers will look at that as some sort of a confirmation that this event is going to change the world. Mr. Buterol is going to get an upgrade. He's going to get a new facelift. This guy's going to become Fit Vitalik, and then he's going to rule the goddamn world because he's got some sort of new <laughs> Turkish city name well that's all well and good but these things are planned pre uh far in advance so realistically a lot of these things are already priced in and in that in that last kind of move that you see about two weeks before the debut of the upgrade or whatever the event is and this goes for all events by the way um not all events but just about every event that's not like truly fundamentally changing uh well you start dumping after the event happens right so you, you build it up two weeks beforehand get all the retailers invested get all the retailers excited and then once the retailers are in and they're buying and they're buyers and now you have buyers and now you have people to dump on and you have you know you can quite literally distribute so again smart money buying somewhere down around here selling right over here and price action coming down as reddit is saying but why what is the news for this it's like guys i just lost 50 percent. any news it's like well, more sellers and buyers right now, unfortunately. Uh, is that the only news that actually really does matter? So remember, remember these these sorts of things. News pieces are typically perpetuated to provide to provide justification for moves for retail investors, so that they don't, so that they basically don't get scared of the game, so that they can blame something else and pass on the blame to you know insert whatever isn't my fault here so that you don't feel you know sorry not you but the retail investor doesn't feel responsible and that make, that causes them to not to feel bad and then they keep on playing the fucking game is basically what happens um anyways so yeah mr Riedel just coming back down uh what about mrs Litecoin? what's she doing um 45 and a half bucks getting rejected right at the blue box territory that we looked at over this past weekend i mean if you if you got to sell in this blue box territory phenomenally done it was in the rising channel as well as we as we looked at over the weekend um or maybe this was uh this past friday either which way uh breaking the rising channel to the downside as confirmed by that last four hour deal to close also breaking this horizontal at 46 and a quarter um yeah if these two moving averages do cross to the downside i would be looking for a nice move down around here at around uh 43 to 43 and a half dollars something like that would make would, would make sense uh daily is daily what are daily stokes doing right now Oops, get off there. Daily Stokes uh, about to snake down and uh, will confirm across the downside if they end here or lower by end of day. But a lot of a lot of hours left in the day. If uh, if we do see a second win in the market, if we do get Bitcoin back above thirty seven fifty, uh, that will undo itself most likely. But of course, you know the thing is with uh, with Mrs. Litecoin is that she actually does have some pretty damn strong support around the forty three and a half dollar mark. So. If that area does break, then that's going to be very bad. It's going to incite a test of uh, of thirty nine fifty, I'd imagine, probably even lower than that at thirty eight dollars. Um, retested this broken trend line, kind of a similar trend line that we saw in Mr. Buterol, except less uh, less mature. Um, but but either which way, probably going to follow whatever Mr. B you know what, whatever Bitcoin and Mr. Buterol do. I mean, that's typically what Mrs. Litecoin does. She has more exaggerate, exaggerated movements. So yes, she was hinting at getting out of you know getting out of the bear market. She was the best argument against being in a bear market but overall not not hitting any of the things that i'm looking for still again this is the perspective of the higher time frames i mean if you look at an hourly it's going to look like a goddamn break at the whole way through but when you look at a daily or especially a weekly it's quickly revealed that this is not really the case uh, as long as we're below 50 and a half dollars in, in opening and closing daily dollars below there more importantly i don't really have any reason to be you know, not bearish on this guy. Uh, still in the formation of basically a rising uh, red wedge, rising uh, channel, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Um, typically a bearishly resolved distribution pattern. So 
again, let's go back on on over to uh, to Mr. Bitcoin. I did forget to go over this as well. I want to check out the two week dodo time frame as you can actually see something that is now confirmed. Uh, we have a very clear and obvious rejection of the red 10 symbol moving average on the two week dodo time frame. More importantly, we do have a very nasty exponential moving average cross right here as this rejection is provided as long as long as we are below the 10 simple moving average, which is now coming in around 38. 80, I would be overall bearish. I'm curious what our oscillators are saying right now. Uh, two weeks RSI uh, actually getting rejected from the exponentials, how I read that. Uh, two week uh, stokes are actually coming up, so fair enough. I'm curious what the weekly stokes are doing right now. Yeah, weekly stokes are weekly stokes actually gain momentum up, huh? Funnily enough, because uh, we did have this this uh, this trend line right here. But we're going to be taking that out. So yeah, uh, what does that mean when the stocks are coming up like that? That does make me want to be a little bit more. I mean, it wants me. To, it, it makes me want to be a little bit more careful. Uh, you do see that the ten cent moving average actually is coming in right around thirty six fifty. So thirty six fifty will be a, a very strong, a very important support. But my opinion is, is that if Bitcoin does open and close, or sorry, if Bitcoin even closes this next daily total below 37.50, we will see 36.50 being taken out. Although technically speaking, I would want to see that confirmed on a weekly. Uh, if the daily happens, I, I would be pretty comfortable saying that you're probably going to see the fall through for that. Again, nothing's confirmed in, in, in a market like this. You know, there, there's no 100% play. But when it comes down to take, you know, looking at trade setups and looking at uh, statistical setups for these sorts of things, which is all that it ever can be, that's what I'd be thinking. It's it would be good enough for me. So if we do close this daily below again, 37.50, I would be uh, I'd, I'd be of that mood essentially. You know, yeah, you know, you might spend your time going sideways a little bit in this range, just like we did, you know, right around uh, 3,800. But overall the direction would be to the south side i would imagine again and that would be that's going to be my disposition as long as we are below that uh, that 21 exponential moving average um, on the daily which we are very currently and very comfortably below right now but hey we've all seen crazier things than a hundred dollar rally before the end of the day or sorry not even a hundred dollar rally but a you know fifty dollar rally essentially by this point um, let's go check out uh, CMEs. CMEs are going to have a nice gap at uh, 38.50. Actually, if you look at it on the daily, we don't really have the gap now, do we? Uh, daily is not really there. If you if you look at it on hourly, it will certainly be there. So, which you know, what 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 ideology do you essentially subscribe to? Well. You know, funnily enough, on the CMEs right here, uh, hourly did not look like it's actually broken. You know, look at this. You could you could make the argument that the hourly is not really broken, something like this really. But uh, I don't believe that that's the right way to be looking at it. I believe the right way to be looking at it is something like this, like a four hour like here. This consolidation gets resolved to the downside. We have the moving averages uh, ready to cross as well and gain momentum as you can see uh, to the downside over here. And if we can actually confirm below this four uh, this two hundred exponential in the four hour delta time frame, which is thirty seven ten, that's going to probably do it for me as well. Um, at the very, you know, at the very least, we're bringing this guy down to uh, low at 3600. But uh, yes, there will be gaps at around uh, 3820 and uh, 3940, 3930 to the upside. Um, if and when Bitcoin does reverse to the to the upside, which of course I do believe it will in time. I'm not I'm a long term believer in Bitcoin, you know, first and foremost. Uh, but long term means long term. You know, got to call a spade a spade, and that's a trader, who, uh, someone who does this as a living on a day to day basis. Well, doesn't really help to be bullish in an overall bearish market, now does it? So again, looking at something like this, uh, that's what I'd be thinking. Uh, but you know, if, if you look at it on the daily, it's already filled. So which which one do you put more weight on? I put more weight on the daily, and this is how I see it right now. I, I, I basically already see it as kind of taken care of. This first gap right here filled by this guy. This second gap right here never even fucking t you know never even tried. So it doesn't. It Daily's going to hold more weight on this. Twenty one is going to hold a lot more weight on this as well. To me, this to me it's it's very clear. And I keep on getting fucking messages about this, which is interesting. But hey, you know, I, I, I appreciate the messages, but also <laughs> can be a little bit overwhelming sometimes. Um, you do see this ascending trend line right here, which was which was governing our, our, uh, our lower highs throughout this segment, um, which was taken out. Uh, what was it last week when everyone got super bullish, right? But look at the volume on these dildos taking us above this resistance. That to me is a clear hunt. That to me is a clear and false breakout, um, which we quickly faded on the next opening uh, last week that we saw last Monday. And then basically having a rejection of the 55 exponential right here, which also is correlated with the 382 Fibonacci retracement, as you can see right here, which is also basically governing this former resistance trend line. So to me, this is just a little bit of a throwover and down, which is typically very bearish as well. If we do if we do break the 21 exponential, which is uh, 37.16 on CMEs by end of day, that'll be 
maybe even more important to me than spot charts doing it because CME charts have just been more, I think they've just been better. They've been, they've been getting things better. Um, this chart has been a lot easier to read than spot charts in my opinion. I mean, we, did we even put in a higher high right here? No, it's just still lower highs. Uh, and again, this is why this is why it matters a lot. You usually see like kind of erratic price action on the weekends because there's not too many people playing the game. You know, a lot of the professionals are gonna be are, are gonna be out of the office. Although yes, I know a lot of them are just running algos, but most of the time they want someone to be behind the desk. Not like just they just run these things and just fucking leave the building. No. <laughs> that, would, that could be a career ending move. Um, but looking at this on the weekly, I mean, what does it look like? You know, same sort of thing as spot essentially, but still just making lower highs. Uh, 10 simple is now sloped to the downside, not good. Um, so yeah, overall, overall, we're just kind of seeing what we've been spoke, what we've been speaking about for the last week actually starting to play out. So again, uh, as long as Bitcoin is below 3750, I am bearish and I would be looking for a move to test the lower end of the 3600 range at the, uh, 3650, something like that. Um, if that breaks, I'd be looking for a move down to low 3500. And then, you know, at that point in time, pressure is on once again, pressure would be on as uh, that would be a fulfillment of the 618 Fibonacci retracement down around here, which then we get to just, then we get to play at, then, then we get to find out, are we going to do another one of these bounces? Like we saw it, you know, around the 6,000 level where Bitcoin just kept on rallying off this area until everyone was just so fucking frustrated and everyone was just so set on 6,000 being the low that it actually breaks or do we, or do we bounce off it again? And, you know, just, just frustrate some more people. Actually, before we go, let's, let's go, let's go look at traditional markets, traditional markets. Once again, at the uh, 281 or actually did close right at resistance, uh, on Friday last week. Um, we've basically, we basically ground the same area that we put in the last one, two, three, four, and maybe fifth top right over here again, though. Um, I mean, it, it works until it doesn't, as far as this being a topping area, 281. Looking at our oscillators, daily stokes are actually going to be looking across the upside. Daily RSI is printing divergence, so I would be careful. And I'm of the uh, and I'm of the opinion that as long as you're printing, you know, as as long as you are reversing from this area, which has been the trend for the last four times, or perhaps even five times, if we confirm this one, you know, the trend is your friend until the end of the trend. So I, I would be taking trades right here. But also, if this thing takes out and this thing makes a new high above 281, I'd get the fuck out, and and I'd get long. I'd get extremely. I, I wouldn't get extremely long, but I'd get long as uh, I don't see anything stopping you from basically your prior highs. You know, 288, 289. 28290 something like that right over here. I mean basically basically your prior highs essentially so again um, I'd be very careful right now if this thing does break down I'd be looking for a move back down to about 275 ish area uh, I'd be looking for strong support right around there um, I would not be bearish on this guy looking for a massive major reversal until until it actually takes out 262 to the downside just as we spoke about on the monthly um, just as we spoke at, uh, spoke about on the monthly for the past few months, ever since the ever since this major down right here, it has not been appropriate to be bearish on this guy. As soon as we got back above 262, I mean, really, really after we bounced off this guy right here, the 50. By the way, I do use the 50 in traditional markets, um, but uh, but everyone's trying to short this bitch. And uh, there's a time and place to be bearish. There's a time and place to be bullish. And right now, you know, as soon as we closed, you know, basically as soon as January ended, as soon as we got above 262 and then and then and then when January ended for like full confirmation, there's there's been really no reason to be short this guy, in my opinion. Um, it doesn't mean you won't have your downs, but until, you know, until we actually break back down below this area, it's it, I, I don't I don't see that I don't see that as a play to be making as far as from a technical now standpoint. Now that's you know opinion aside, of course. Uh, let's go check out some shit coins as well. What about Zcash? How's he doing? Oh my god! What the fuck? <laughs> Zcash? What the hell's going on over here? Uh, this doesn't look right. Wait, what? Wait, wait, what? <laughs> Zcash down to fifteen dollars and fifty-two fucking cents. There's your electric coin, baby. What about Bcash? He's got to be doing better. He's a higher letter, letter in the alphabet. Nope, he being held by the ten simple moon average right over here. Again, making higher or lower highs all along the way, taking out the twenty-one exponential yesterday, having continuations off there. Tron Cash probably down as well. Yep. Oh, hitting hitting the uh, hitting the move that we've been looking for at uh, two or uh, two point one nine cent. Uh, I'd imagine that we probably bounce off this area on first pass. Um, but if it does fail, I'd be looking for a move probably down around, 
uh, I mean, at that point, below two cents. Uh, Neocash, what's Neocash doing? Uh, bad. Uh, it's like, what do you even say about this? Uh, you're in some sort of a rising channel right here, very obviously. Massive rejection, follow through, breaking the 21, bad. E EOS Cash, what's he doing? Mm, definitely, definitely the least bad of them all, but still overall below the critical area of uh, four dollars and uh, 55 cents or 50 cents whatever it is um, bearish as long as you're below there and probably coming down uh, if everything else in the market is coming down so it like likely this one is as well uh, ripple cash what's he doing oh no don't tell me the descending triangle is acting like a descending triangle the schnozberries tastes like schnozberries uh again you know breaking the 21 yet we we caught this yesterday or sorry even two days before yesterday we saw confirmation today we see continuations again in, in the formation of an overall descending triangle as long as we're below 34 and a half cent very fucking bad it's been that way for the past you know two three months it, technically if 28 cents does break there would be a measure move pointing down you know at 18 19 cents i think that you'd actually probably have support a little bit higher than that but that's uh, technically what that one would say. Uh, Monero Cash, what's he saying? Um, just doing the same thing as all the other things, basically. Lower highs and seeing continuation. Doing something like this, perhaps. Uh, breaking the 21, but not seeing the same continuation that we saw in the other ones. But still, you know, if, if everything else is coming down likely, like this one is, well, Stellar Cash, tell me Stellar is keeping it up. No! Not Stellar! <sighs> Ascending broadening wedge, looking like it wants to be broken to the downside. Actually, going to be flirting with the lower support of this. I mean, if this one breaks down, I'd be looking towards uh, a move towards prior lows, you know, below eight cents, um, something like that. It's basically being held by this uh, resistance trend line as well. Not good. Not good. What's what's uh, GBC going to be doing? Yeah, GBC is kind of a wild card right now. Um, if GBC does break back down below four dollars and twenty two cents on open, I'd become extremely bearish on 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 all of the markets, looking for not just to move down to thirty six hundred, but also probably thirty four hundred. And if if GBC breaks this area right here, three dollars and eighty six cents, I would be looking for new lows. Uh, not just for GBC, obviously for spot to be very abundantly clear. Um, okay, cool. So let's get back on to Mr. Bitcoins. And I think I've basically said everything that I want to see. I'm, I mean, really what we're seeing right now is just seeing the result of all the things that we've been, you know, keeping our eyes on for the last literally a week as this, as this range resolved itself. Again, to, to, to summarize, uh, I don't really see a huge rush to be in a position right now. What I would be saying is, and, and, and like I said, I actually do have a position right now, uh, to be fair. Um, you know, I'm I'm short about a hundred thousand uh, from 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 higher from sixty three hundred and then thirty seven thirty, but that's on June futures, which are trading uh, about forty, mm, about twenty bucks below spot for twenty five bucks below spot. It looks like so again. I wouldn't be in a I wouldn't be in a huge rush to get a position though because if we are to actually confirm below the 21 exponential today at 3750, I would be looking for a retest anywhere around 3750, and you could probably get in another position most likely. But that's going to obviously take until the end of the day. You know, it's it's going to it's going to take its time quite literally. So, again, uh, if that does happen, I would be looking for a move overall to test uh, 3650, the 0.5 Fibonacci retracement. If that area fails, and I'd be looking for a retest of the 618, which would also be a retest of this rising trend line. I'd keep my eyes on GBTC um, as it does come into as as it will be back online later today when the US markets open as it trades OTC and we should get some resolution on where that guy when that guy's opens if he if he opens below that support that we spoke about that's going to be a damn big signal um but for now you know just the, the the waiting game continues with potentially the inner workings of a trade uh in our face right now again looking at all of the confluences between the daily stokes the two-day stokes the daily exponentials the four-hour exponentials the 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 daily jewel actually the 12-hour jewel giving a perfect sell last night too um I mean, is this a perfect sell? It's not a perfect sell, but this this was a sell signal right here. Someone called it out in the program chat. Um, I believe it was Mr. Ro Mornfall. Credit to him for calling that one out. Beautiful call because I did not catch that one, and that would have told you to short literally right before this downturn right here. So again, if you have if you have access to the jewel, this is what a this is what a good this is what a setup can look like. It's not a per, it's not picture perfect, but it, it can get the job done. Um, similar to what you basically it's basically the similar setup that we saw at uh, at forty two hundred right here before that massive down. I mean, like literally one tick before that, beautifully done. Um, so again, that's that's essentially what I'm looking at right now. Those are the those are the pass forwards. That's the supports resistances that I'm looking at. 
again, as long as we're below 3750, I'm overall bearish. That's it's basically that simple. If you just want to synthesize this guy down, I'll start. Uh, I'll, I'll probably end it here as. Uh, as searching for my words today, very difficult, unfortunately, but you know what? The show must go on, and I'll be back on later with some more live stream action, hopefully a new brain as well, as I'm sure my ramblings are getting a little bit more annoying, but I did get out, and I did finally begin the options tutorial series. It is four videos long as of the current moment in time. There are another 10, no, sorry, eight videos on the way, and they'll be released every night at uh, 1 a.m. my time, which is probably like... In, I think it's about an hour before the daily door close uh, on spot. So again, keep an eye out for those if you're interested in learning options uh, as they will be coming out during every every night for the next week or so. Anyways, that's going to do it for today. I hope this one finds you well. hope that you're having a beautiful rest of your Monday, your, your, your blood Monday. And uh, I'll be back on later with some more live stream action. So looking forward to seeing you there. Take care.